We give God glory in honor and praise with thanksgiving. Our trust is in the name of the Lord. We're thanking you, Lord God, for your tender mercies and your loving kindness and for every blessing. Now, God Almighty, I pray that you bless all of those who are joining us today for the word of God for our Tuesday night teaching. We're asking, Lord God, that you touch hearts and minds and that there be a lifting up and not a tearing down, a building up and not a pulling down, a strengthening and not a weakening. We pray that God Almighty, in the righteous name of Jesus, the Christ of the living God, that someone will hear and be strengthened today. Bless now your precious people. I pray that God Almighty, you will fill them full with the Holy Spirit. Lord God, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. I pray for their families and their loved ones. And even our brothers and sisters have gone on to be with you. I pray for their families, that they'll be steadfast, unmovable, and always continue to abound in the work of the Lord, knowing that their labor in the Lord is not in vain. To be not dismayed, whatever be tied, for God will take care of each and every one of us. Now, Holy Spirit, think through my thoughts, speak through my mouth. Let it be all of you and none of me. Make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And let me speak the things that become sound doctrine. And get all the glory, all honor, and all praise belongs to you, my Lord, my God, and my King. I humbly submit myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we want to welcome you to another Agape Love uh, Bible Study, Agape Love Ministries Bible Study. I'm Dr. Joyce Marie Dixon, and I welcome all of our Agape Love family and our Agape Love alumni all over the country, amen, that are listening to us. And, and those of my family and friends, I pray that God will bless you tonight, or today, today, you know, whether you're going to watch this in the evening or early in the day, may the Lord bless that which you hear today. And again, be edified and encouraged. So we're going to talk about oneness in Christ. Isn't it good to know that you are not alone? That no matter what you experience in this world, in this life, that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. And you are not alone. Because, you know, when he tells us, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, he means it. He said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. So... God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is in you. Let's take, a, let's take a look and see some of the things that was on the mind of Christ before he was crucified. You were on his mind, you were in his heart, and you know you were on his mouth as he spoke these things to the Father. This indeed is the true Lord's Prayer, the prayer that he prayed on our behalf before he got ready to be crucified on the cross. St. John 17, 1 through 8. It said, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee. So there is a confirmation, amen, a confirming that Jesus knew, amen, that he came to bring glory and honor to the Father. He knew also, and let us know, that the Father would glorify the Son. And that's important because it's been documented in heaven. His word is what? Forever settled in heaven. The second verse says, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should have eternal life, to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know the only, that they might know the only true God. Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, the Almighty God, the El Shaddai, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, whom thou hast sent, Yashim. The fourth verse said, For I have glorified thee on earth. And that's what the Lord came to do, to bring glory and honor to the Father. He said, I have glorified thee on the earth. He's no longer uh, uh, just a mystical thought in somebody's mind. But he made the reality of God the Father real. As he told Philip, for the Father and I am one. And so we see here 
that he said, I came to give glory and honor to the Father on earth. His mantle, he said, I have finished the work which thou gave me to do. That was a mandate on his life. Amen. A mantle on his life and the message of the gospel, the good news. And he would fulfill it with his death, burial, and resurrection. He said, O oh, Father, glorify thou with me, with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And so he said, give me the glory back, Lord. The glory that you, I had with you at the beginning of the world. Hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah, saints. Come on, let's glorify him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. And then he went on, and I hope you got your pen and paper. Amen. Let's, let's study this. And he said, I've, I've manifested thy name unto the men, amen, which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. And so many times, amen, and we think about this in our own lives, how God chose us out of the world. And we're going to see that a little bit later on in the, in the teaching tonight. But you've been chosen. Amen. You've been bought with a price, purchased and paid for by the precious blood of the Lamb. And he has made choice of you. And he said, Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Aren't you glad to know, saints, that there's some things that God gave you, and you know for a surety that they came from God. I know the anointing on my life, the teaching that comes forth, the ministry of agape, uh, whether it's the church or the Bible college or uh, whatever I'm doing for the Lord, evangelistic work. I cannot take any glory. It all belongs to him. I'm just a servant. And you know what? Servant leaders recognize that leadership has a responsibility. Amen. And we fulfill it by obeying what the Lord has given us to do. And so he said, they've kept thy, thy word. Now, they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I've given unto them the words that thou gavest me. And they have received them. And have surely known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didn't send me. Check it out. He, he said, he said I gave them the words. Remember, he said, the words I speak, their spirit and life. He said, what I hear my father do, that's what I do. Or what I see my father do. And so these are the words. And that's why we obey him. We are imitators of Christ. So we're written, we're letters. We're living epistles, written in real of all men. But guess what? We say what the Lord said. Hallelujah. And so when he said, uh, for God so loved the world, he gave. We say the same thing. His only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So I don't change the narrative. I say the things that the Lord has given me to say. And this Bible, this word of truth, amen. Your Bible, the written word of God, amen. We say what it says, amen. For the lips of the priest, the book of Malachi says, should always keep the word of God. Amen. Keep truth, Father. And we're going to see that later on. Well, let's go on. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about, hallelujah, the mantle of prayer. Somebody say that with me. The mantle of prayer. You may be an intercessor listening today. And you might say, you know, I know I have a mantle of prayer on me. Amen. Uh, some of us have a mantle to preach or teach or uh, whatever God has given us. But there's also a mantle of prayer. And that's why you see the Jews many times, you know, they have the long prayer cloth with the tassels on it. I have one and I know my daughter has one or two of them. And many times when uh, some of the students have come to prayer, they'll bring their prayer scarf or prayer cloth. And sometimes even uh, on their head. But Jesus had that. He, he wore his prayer mantle all the time. So he says, I pray for them, the ninth verse. He said, I pray not for the world. Jesus is the, greater, the greatest intercessor. Amen. He said, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. 
and all mine are thine, and thine are mine. And so this, this is expressing ownership. You belong to him, but guess what? He also belongs to you. So he's father, he says, Father, and all are mine that you gave me. And now I am no more in the world. He said, and I am glorified in them. Hallelujah. So we that possess him, and he possesses us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is resident in you. And so he can be glorified through you. Hallelujah. I said he's in you, and he can be glorified through you. And he will do his work, amen, through you as well. Hallelujah. We give him praise. And he says, I am now no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. So he knew that attached to his mantle, there was a message. And he wanted to leave that message with us before he left the world. So he said, and I come to thee. And so he knew his uh, divine assignment was just about up on the earth. 33 and a half years, I believe he was on the earth. But look what he said to do the ministry of the Messiah. Because we know that he appeared many times as a theophonic manifestation when he came to see Abraham, his friend. When he came to talk to Joshua about the battle of Jericho. Many times he manifested, even when he came to see Samson's uh, mother to tell her about that unique son that was going to be born to her. But look what he says on. He goes on and say, he said, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one. Talking about the oneness in Christ. He said, keep, Heavenly Father, keep them in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Those that thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. The Lord always, is always his desire is that we be one with the Father. Amen. One with the Son. The evidence of the Holy Spirit brings us into that oneness. He says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. You know, there's power in his name. Yashim. Amen. That name. That's the Jews would say that name. It was so holy. They dare not speak it, so they say that name. Amen. And there's power and there's healing. There's wisdom. There's sanctification. There's protection. I, I remember so many times, saints, when, when we were little, uh, there were, I had 10 brothers and sisters, and if one of us was sick or something had happened, my mother would cry out, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Or she wanted to rebuke, uh, rebuke us uh, for cutting up or being bad or whatever. She always said, in the name of Jesus. And I want you to know that you can use that name because not only should it be on your lips, it should be in your heart. Amen. And so we, we use that name, not in vain, but with great reference and with fear, godly fear, and with honor, and with glory. And so he said, Father, keep th through thy own name thou, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. And he said, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. And we know what happened to Judas. We know what happened to Judas Iscariot. But he said, other than him, they were all being kept in his name. It was not time yet for any of them to leave, but to continue to do the work. Now, then he says, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee. Hallelujah. See, there was a prophetic word concerning Judas, the son of perdition. So the word was always being fulfilled. Hallelujah. Somebody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, so now I come to thee. So he knows his time and his season is over on the planet earth, that earthly ministry. But he's got this mandate and this message to still fulfill. He said, and now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world. That's the message, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. The gospel, hallelujah. It speaks of the good news, hallelujah. And the good news brings the joy of the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God has given me the joy of the Lord. 
For the joy of the Lord indeed is my strength. And I hope it's your strength too, my beloved brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. He said that they might have my joy fulfilled in the self. Remember, Jesus came to give us joy. He gave us peace. And remember, love, joy, and peace follow each other in the fruit of the Spirit. He said, I've given them thy word, and the world have hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, or that we still have a work to do, amen, until our assignment is over. But he said, but thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We're just, remember saints, we're just sojourners here. We're passing through. Hallelujah. We are people that have a divine assignment on earth, and that's to bring as many as we can unto the kingdom of God, to preach the gospel, and to make sure that we're lights in the world. We're salt and light, that we make a difference. Our very presence makes a difference on the world. Have you ever been somewhere and somebody said to you, I, you seem different. Where do you, why do you seem so different? Sometimes they don't even know what to say. I, I've been in places and worked jobs and they, they didn't know what to say. They couldn't figure it out. But guess what? That's your opportunity to share the good news and to say, listen, what you don't know and what you don't see, I'm going to share with you. I'm a believer in Christ Jesus and I want to introduce you to the God of my salvation. It's an opportunity for you to share the good news. And so he said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. See, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. I'm going to say it again. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. So he says, Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So we put on part of the armor of God is the belt of truth. Jesus said, you will know what? The truth. And the truth will do what? Set you free. Hallelujah. And he said, I am the way the truth and the life. No man come to the Father except by me. Amen. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Hallelujah. St. John 17 and 26. And he said, and I have declared unto them thy name. That's part of his message. Amen. Hallelujah. For the Son of Man came to destroy the works of the enemy, so that through him and through his blood, amen, he is the propitiation. He bled for you and me. Hallelujah. And so he said, I've declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I am them. Hallelujah. And now he says, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself. See the affirmation and the confirmation that Jesus indeed is the son of God. We are brought and we were brought into the fold, the kingdom of God made one through Christ. So he said, and for their sake, I sanctify myself. I've said, I've put myself apart. I set apart, set apart myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Hallelujah. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, their testimony. And that testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy that they all might be one. Hallelujah. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. Hallelujah. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. You see how he's constantly repeating this? Oneness in Christ. That you are never alone. You are part of the body. But there is a Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And guess what? They dwell in you. I'm going to show you that a little bit later. But look what it said. In them, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be perfect in love. Hallelujah. They may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Remember, God is love, and love is perfected in faith. Your faith, love is perfected, and faith is perfected through love. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before, look what it said, thou loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee. And these, hallelujah, have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them, thy name 
and I will declare it. Amen and amen. Holly out of my for two of you witnesses. He's saying again, and I will declare it. That the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them. And I in them. So you see, God is love. And God is in you. So you have the love of God. It's resident. You just got to let it flow out of you. Let, let the love of God work through you and in you. Let's go to the book of Colossians 1. Starting at the 13th verse. Colossians, the first chapter. And let's go to the 13th verse. The Holy Spirit translates us out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, where we have been redeemed by his blood. That is the Holy Spirit's operation and his ministry. It says in the 13th verse, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. It's the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, where God reigns and rules from. And, we, and whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God. Hallelujah. Christ is the image of the invisible God. You can't see God the Father, but you can see because God the Father is expressed, his face is expressed in his son. The DNA of his son is in his blood. Not the, not the DNA of Adam, but the DNA of the blood of the Lamb of God. God the Father's blood. And look what he said. Who is it? What? It is whom we have re received redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of son, who is the image of the invisible, the invisible God, and the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, Visible and invisibles, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities. Hallelujah. Thrones or dominions or principalities. God is over all. He's over all. He created the world. And even though they may not even receive him, sometimes they don't know him. Sometimes they gave him, uh, many of our Indian brothers and sisters call him the great spirit. But whatever you call him, he is God almighty. He is the almighty, the El Shaddai. El Elyon, the Most High God. And we lift up his name. All things were created by him. Jesus Christ, the Word, created all things. And for him. He created them, and they were for him. And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. He upholds all things by the Word of his power. And he's upholding you, my beloved brothers and sisters. You may be trying to feel kind of down, but guess what? He's able to reach down way low. And pick you up. Hallelujah. Now unto him was able to keep you from falling. Able to present your faultless before the presence of his glory. With exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. And so sometimes when you, and right now during this pandemic, I know sometimes you get a little, you may feel a little down. I know. I've had a few of those days. But guess what? I, I learned like the song said, I won't complain. Because I know it's just, a, it's going to pass. And this too will pass. And you may feel like you're up today and down tomorrow. But guess what? God has you in the palm of his hands. And I know sometimes the people that you love get, sometimes may get on your nerve. But God got that granddaughter, that grandson. He got those children. He knows your husband and your wife. He knows what they're going through. It may be something connected to maybe a job situation. But God still got you. Hallelujah. And he loves you. And we give him praise for that. And so it says, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Do you know that the world and the universe all is upheld by the word of his power? All things consist because he is. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So he is my, is the Lord your head? Is he the Lord of your life? Is he just, he's more, see, he's my Savior and he's my Lord. And he's my God. He's my everything. In trouble, he's still my God. When I'm hurting, he's still my God. When I'm happy and, and glad about things, he's still my God. In the city, he's my God. In the country, he's my God. When I'm at home, he, when I'm, whether I'm at church, wherever I am, because he promised, I'll never leave you, Joyce Marie. And guess what? He'll never leave you either. 
Let's go on. The firstborn from the dead and, and all things that he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him. I say whether they be on things in earth or things in heaven. See that was part of the mantle. And the message just furthered the, the, the mantle. The reason why he came. Why he prayed for you. Why he died for you. Why he worked miracles in the land. Why we can, we can claim by his stripes I am healed. My God shall supply all of my need. He's more than enough. And I love him with everything that's in me. I may struggle sometimes, and I know you too. Amen. Maybe there's some days that you just say, oh, Lord, I, but give it to him. Cast all your care upon him. Know that he cares for you. And he loves you more than you could ever imagine. In Colossians 2, 6 through 12, it says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. If you received him, let your lifestyle, your walk, your, you know, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We walk in the light as he is in the light. That's my lifestyle, my conversation. So as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith. Amen. The just shall live by what? Faith. And faith works by what? Love. The operation of faith. Amen. Will operate in your love, your love life, your love language. But that, that thing that you do by faith, you do it as unto the Lord. And you do it from the standpoint, I love God and I love his people. Hallelujah. He even tells you to bless those that despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you. Right now, our nation is being torn apart by hate. But guess what? There's more love than hate. I'm going to say it again. There's more love in this world than hate. How do I know it? Because God upholds all things by the word of his power. And God is love. So there's more love then there is hate. And there's more lovers, I believe, of mankind than there are haters. And so we overcome evil with good. And then he said, as we have been taught, this is Apostle Paul speaking in the book of Colossians, rooted and built up in him, established in faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Come on, let's be thankful unto God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for every blessing. Let's stay thankful. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain defeat. Deceit, rather. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Just trying to deceive you. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of this world. And not after Christ. What God says, that's what... I want. See, I'm in agreement. His word is the final authority over my life. And it ought to be over your life. Because God watches over his word to perform it. So since it's the final authority over my life, I let God's word control, lead, guide, direct, and protect me. Amen. I pray the same thing for you too, my beloved. And so he said, after the traditions of men, after the root of it, and not after Christ. So, For in him dwell of all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are co what? Complete in him. Hallelujah. It's in him I live and move and have my being. I'm not three-fifths of a woman or a human being. I am a human being. I am completed in him. Not three-fifths. He didn't stop at three-fifths. We are made of one blood of Adam. Hallelujah. And then the second Adam took us, we had to be born again. Hallelujah. But whether you're the natural man or you've been a born again man or woman of God, guess what? You are complete in him. All you have to do is say yes to his will and God will finish what he began. He which begun a good work in you is faithful to complete it. We're complete in him. Which is the head of all principality and power and whom also you are circumcised with the sec not with the circumcision made with hands it's made look what it says you in whom you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands he himself circumcised in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by what the circumcision of Christ because we're all one in Christ buried with him in baptism 
wherein also you were risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. The Holy Ghost operating. Amen. That good thing in you. Hallelujah. We're saved by faith through grace. It's a gift of God. Not of works as any man should boast. Christ paid it all. And because he paid, the, he substituted himself for you. You are now acceptable in the sight of God the Father. And that's so wonderful to be there. And to be in that place. Well, Jesus went back. We're going to finish with this message. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you were risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, whom he have raised from the dead. We are his body, he is our head, our Lord and our Savior God, and we belong to him alone. So let me just finish with this, and we're almost done. Hallelujah. When he told Peter and him, come and follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And then they followed him. And going on from thence, he saw two other brethren, James, John, Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and they immediately left off the ship and their father, from their father. They went from their father, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, the message and the preaching, the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Why? Because that was his message. The good news. And through it all, we all came to Christ and we were buried with him and raised with him and we will live forever with him. We are his body. We belong to him alone. If you write that word alone real big, look what it says. A-L-L-1. -L A-L, all one, all in one, and one in all. We're knitted together. You are my family, and Jesus is our God, and the, and, and the Father is our God. So I love you today. Have a wonderful and God-blessed day. Stay strong, and remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. May the Lord bless you with his peace. Amen. All right. Lavora, I mean, Dr. Nolan said, thank you, Lord. Oh, she was listening? I didn't know it. I thought she was going, mm-hmm. Yeah, she was on my phone, see, she was live. <laughs>